Welcome to Cool Facts TV, where we uncover the truth behind the world's most mysterious and powerful organizations. Today, we're taking a closer look at the United States Secret Service, the elite government agency tasked with protecting the nation's currency and the president. From carrying bags of the president's blood to following him into the bathroom, these agents leave no stone unturned in the name of protecting the commander-in-chief. So, let's dive in and discover 15 secrets of Secret Service agents. On the day he was shot and killed by John Wilkes Booth, Abraham Lincoln approved the formation of the United States Secret Service, a government agency tasked with protecting the integrity of the nation's currency. In 1901, after the assassination of President William McKinley, Congress extended their duties to involve the protection of the president. They travel with bags of the president's blood. Although thousands of agents are employed by the Secret Service, only a small number are assigned to the Presidential Protection Division, PPD, the branch of the agency responsible for guarding the lives of the Commander-in-Chief and their family. According to Jeffrey Robinson, co-author of former agent Joseph Petro's autobiography Standing Next to History, the division is methodical about making sure agents are trained in 10-minute medicine or doing everything possible to keep the president alive until he or she can receive specialized medical attention in the event of an emergency. When they travel, they're never more than 10 minutes away from a trauma center, Robinson says. They'll have an agent posted at the hospital who knows the operating room staff. Additionally, the travel group will have bags of blood in the president's motorcade in the event a transfusion is needed. The focus on emergency medicine training helped save Ronald Reagan's life during a 1981 assassination attempt. They make sure the president is never alone, even in the bathroom. Being on protective detail means following the president wherever he or she might go. This includes the bathroom, the doctor's office, or anywhere that might benefit from a little privacy. The president is never alone, Robinson says. When Reagan was in office, Joe was there for his prostate exams and colonoscopies. He was always in the room with a gun. And if he thought the doctor was any kind of threat, he would have shot him. They interview potential assassins. While making a threat against the president's life is never a good idea, it's up to agents to determine whether you should be warned, committed for psychiatric evaluation, or charged with a Class E felony. According to 23-year Secret Service veteran Tim Wood, author of Criminals and Presidents, The Adventures of a Secret Service Agent, this is called protective intelligence. Anytime someone makes a suggestion of wanting to cause the president harm, every aspect of their lives will be investigated. We interview friends, neighbors, associates, employees, Wood says. The question is, is this person serious? When Wood interviewed a man who had made repeated calls threatening Reagan's life, he determined the subject had an alcohol problem and possible mental illness, sparing him serious prosecution. They can be ordered to protect anyone. Presidents and vice presidents don't have the ability to refuse Secret Service supervision once they take office, although some can switch to private security detail once they've served their term. However, they do have a say in whether someone else can be assigned Secret Service protection. According to Ronald Kessler, author of In the President's Secret Service, agents started to escort some White House staff members following the September 11th attacks at the behest of George W. Bush. It's a fairly recent development, Kessler says. Among other duties, agents can accompany children to school, standing outside classrooms until the class is over. They film the president in case something happens. For all of the controversy it created, the Zapruder film of the 1963 John F. Kennedy assassination was invaluable in helping the Secret Service understand how quickly a situation can spin out of control. To this day, agents still screen the footage as part of their training. According to Kessler, they also film current presidential motorcades in the event they need to review an attack. Recently, someone threw something at Donald Trump at Mar-a-Lago, Kessler says. 
they were able to locate the person thanks to video. The food is under constant surveillance. If you send the president a Christmas ham, it'll never get to him, Robinson says. Every bite of food presented to the president is prepared under the watchful eye of the Secret Service, who stare down White House chefs to make sure no one is flavoring with arsenic or rat poison. When the president travels, Navy stewards come along to prepare food. And when the president has a photo op at a diner and orders food, it's not likely he's going to eat it. Surprisingly, it's still possible to just order a pizza. If the president wants a pizza, they'll have it delivered to the Naval Observatory or another address nearby, Robinson says. Since the pizzeria doesn't know who it's for, it reduces the danger. Hotels hate them. When the president travels, the Secret Service kicks into overdrive, scouting hotel destinations in an attempt to control a foreign environment. Hotel employees who will be in contact with the government entourage are subject to background checks. If anyone has a criminal history, the hotel manager will ask them not to come in that day, Kessler says. The Secret Service will also take over entire floors above and below the president and commandeer elevators for their own private use, which can disrupt a hotel's business. They'll even keep an elevator repairman on standby in the event the POTUS gets stuck. They have a way of tracking you, and it's in your desk drawer right now. When the White House receives troubling or threatening handwritten correspondence, agents have a way of narrowing down their search for subjects. Kessler says that the Secret Service, working in tandem with ink manufacturers, maintains a vast database of distinctive tags in the ink that can be identified and narrowed to the brand and where in the country it's sold. It's similar to the way explosives manufacturers identify material, he says. Working the rope is the most nerve-wracking part of the job. According to Wood, no other detail duty is quite as stressful as dealing with impromptu presidential greetings with private citizens standing behind a roped-off area. That's where agents earn their money, he says. You have no idea what an uncontrolled crowd might do. To minimize threats, agents are constantly scanning for hands stuffed in pockets or other signs of suspicious activity. They're on the present sunglasses? Those are for crowd scanning without tipping off potential suspects and to ward off any liquids or other projectiles thrown in their direction. They tend to pick up new hobbies. Because the president is never without an escort, Secret Service agents are often forced to learn new hobbies. We didn't have any experience riding horses when he accompanied Bill Clinton for rides during his two terms. Fortunately, Clinton was not a master horseman like Reagan, so it was just a simple trail ride, Wood says. But Clinton was a well-conditioned jogger, which forced agents to be in great shape in order to be able to keep up. You're doing your job while running for five miles, Wood says. There's no sworn oath to die for the president. Despite Hollywood's depictions of life in the service, agents never have to explicitly swear to give up their life in order to protect the president. They never utter that sentence, Kessler says. It's understood that something like that could happen, but they take every possible step to avoid it. Their limo is straight out of a James Bond movie. When the president is on the road, He's typically in a very heavily armored limousine that's flat tire proof, bulletproof, and driven by agents with extensive experience in defensive driving. According to Wood, agents are trained to perform a 180 degree turn in the event of a roadblock or explosion. Both the limo and other vehicles used by the president are serviced by a secret service garage, which makes modifications to commercial vehicles to make them more attack resistant. They get shot with fake bullets. In order to prepare for any eventuality, agents undergo regular and rigorous scenario training, with an agent acting as a stand-in for the president while other agents try to navigate threats. To make the simulation effective, 
Wood says that the training incorporates non-lethal marking rounds or plastic bullets that leave a color trace and a superficial sting. Instead of a blank going off, you'd know if you've been hit or where you hit your target, he says. They don't carry bags. The quickest way to annoy a secret service agent? Ask them to carry your luggage or grocery bags. Vice President Walter Mondale once asked an agent to pick up laundry, Robinson says. They don't do that. They're tough and cool, but not enough for tattoos. That's right, mostly. If you have visible body markings, you will be required to medically remove such visible body markings at your own expense prior to entering on duty with the Secret Service, the USSS says on its site. When asked about the tattoo taboo, a USSS spokesperson emailed, the U.S. Secret Service, similar to other law enforcement agencies, has a uniform standard address to which employees are held. Thanks for watching our video on the 15 secrets of Secret Service agents. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss a cool fact again. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.